Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kessler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave on a favorite topic, antenna analyzers. The question comes from Robert Brady, K5RPB. Uh, he says, hello, Dave. I've been contemplating the purchase of an analyzer after watching you and others use it for determining resonance on your homebrews. I'm getting into this aspect of the hobby now, but a little wallet shy having spent so much on equipment in the past. I can understand that very, very well. Uh, do you consider an analyzer to be a primary purchase for building antennas? It certainly helps. Um, or should I rely on good engineering practices and using SWR meters for this? Also, having never used an analyzer before, is the only purpose for this to determine SWR without having to put the antenna up and down so many times? What are some of the other benefits that analyzers provide to compensate for the high purchase price? Finally, do you consider an analyzer like the MFJ to be superior over the vector analyzers that I'm seeing on Amazon and other locations? I've noticed the vector analyzers are in the $60 to $100 range for the little uh, nano VNA is, is what you get for those. Um, and I'll say something about those in a minute. Whereas the MFJ analyzer is somewhere in the vicinity of $300. Yes. Uh, they can certainly be expensive. Let's uh, go out here so we can see the entire board. Because I want to show you three of the analyzers that I have. Um, this right here, this, and this. This is the MFJ analyzer. This is the classic in the field. Um, now, first of all, understand that these are all some form of a vector network analyzer. Vector simply means that it's got a real component and a reactive component. And when you add the two together, you get a vector. You get a phase angle and a magnitude, which is the uh, resistance, or the uh, absolute value of the resistance. Okay, and uh, this one right here I've had for uh, years and years and years and years. And uh, it's very easy to use. You just basically uh, set the range that you want, tune in the frequency that you want, and you can see the, um, you can see the, Okay, you can see, um, like here, there's nothing connected. So the SWR is greater than 25, and it will give you both the resistance and the reactance that won't put a sign on the reactance. If you read the book, you can interpolate what the sign is, okay? And you just put this to the frequency range that you want. It'll go all the way from uh, 160 meters up to uh, 2 meters. Yeah, two meters. It doesn't do the 440 band. Um, this one, yeah, it's uh, there's several different models of it. This is the 259B. I think they're up to the D now. Okay, and this will do many, many other things beside uh, just uh, giving you the SWR. You can use this to measure uh, coax length uh, the newer ones will also measure the coax impedance and uh, you can look if like for example there's a break in your coax and you don't know where it is you can use this to analyze how far it is out to the break okay it's lots of different things that it does okay now I like this analyzer because if uh, if you look at the numbers up here you can see the, uh, let's put it down here. You can see that uh, 4 through 10, so that would be 7. If I've got an antenna on 40 meters that's acting funny, okay, I can tune a 
above the band, I can tune below the band, and I can see where that SWR really is. Whereas on a fancier one like this, this is a very, very nice antenna analyzer from Rig Expert. It's the AA230 Zoom. Uh, they sent me this one. Uh, this one I bought. They sent me this one. Um, this comes with an end connector, and there's an adapter here to our American Standard uh, uh, PL259s right there. Uh, this particular one um, will give you a chart, Smith charts, which have to do with transmission lines. There are all different kinds of things you can do with it, but you got to punch it in. One thing, it'll give you an SWR chart for like a whole band. Uh, so you can go, um, let's see, let's enter there. And this will give you something over the entire 20 meter band uh, and you get nice graphs. When I do graphs of antenna, SWR, bandwidths and so on, I use this one because I can just copy that picture or shoot that with this camera. It, it, uh, it does pretty well up there. Okay. Now, um, this does all kinds of other things. Uh, time delay, reflectometer. Um, you can look at different constants, both uh, the reactance and the impedance. I'm sorry, the resistance and the impedance multiple things to do. One thing it does not do is it does not have this knob right here. So if you need to see what's happening to the SWR out of the band, I usually go back to this one. For example, when I was putting up the MFJ17754 antenna and trying to find where it resonated, uh, I had to use go back to this one. I couldn't get this one to do it. I went back to this one went and found it was resonating way below the 40 meter band so I could make the adjustment and put it back up. Now note that these um, antenna analyzers um, do not give you the SWR of an unmounted antenna. The antenna needs to be up in place in its environment because what this is measuring is actually the SWR of the combination of the transmission line, the antenna, and its environment, okay? So you've got to put it up into place. Now, if you know what the frequency is at the lowest SWR, you can kind of calculate backwards to what the electrical length must be. Okay, and then you compare that with the physical length, get the right um, velocity factors and everything, and you can get pretty close in trimming an antenna or lengthening it to the right uh, dimensions. Now, this antenna right here is the FAVA5 antenna analyzer, and uh, you can see that it's got a lot of different things uh, that it measures and you use the buttons here to do that. This actually comes as a kit. It's uh, from Germany. Um, you go to funkamateur.de. F-U-N-K in German, funk is radio and amateur is amateur. Okay, radio amateur dot D-E, which is the top level domain for Germany, okay? And then these buttons, it depends on what it says uh, right in there as to what they are. This is a really neat little antenna analyzer and it will graph and it will connect to the computer. Now this is one that I've had experience connecting to the computer and getting really cool graphs uh, on the computer. And again, this will give you both the reactive and the resistive part and everything like that. And again, these all measure the same thing. They measure the combination 
of the feed line, the antenna and its environment. All right, and uh, they work uh, just fine. Like I said, I tend to grab this one first just because it is so flexible and so easy to use. So that, uh, let's see, we've not answered his main question yet. Okay, the question is, do I need an antenna analyzer? The answer is no. Um, I went for decades without one. Uh, and I would put up an antenna and I didn't do much experimentation. I usually put up dipoles and I would um, be very careful about how I uh, used it and uh, so on and just use the SWR meter and I'd plot it at different points and then I'd make adjustments as necessary. And once I had it in shape, I didn't use it again. Even after I bought this thing, I was delighted with it. But once I got the antenna tuned, it just goes back in the drawer. Um, and that's true of all of these, once you've got it tuned. Of course, now I test antennas all the time. And so, uh, it's nice to have these around. This one was sent to me for review. This one I purchased, it's about a hundred dollars or so, and you have to do some mild soldering uh, to solder two boards together and then install it in here. Um, it's, and it's not difficult to use. Now, the other little thing are the nano VNAs. The nano VNAs are true uh, vector network analyzers. So they'll take a network of resistive and reactive components, which could be an antenna or could be just some components, and it will tell you all about them. Now to set the thing up to use as an antenna tuner is not um, a straightforward thing to do. Uh, and they keep changing the uh, firmware on them and I worked with uh, Tom Fryricks who is uh, an Augie and a patron on the Front Range who uh, walked me through using it and it was quite complicated to get it set up to act just as an SWR meter which it will do but some people like that sort of thing and they like the challenge it is by far the cheapest of these alternatives this would be next then this then this okay in terms of expense um, I went 20 or 30 years without having my own antenna tuner and then I got this and frankly I would not go back to not having an antenna tuner they are expensive or you can get a less expensive one like this learn how to use it Although you will fall, and notice this has a BNC connection, so you need an adapter for PL259s. Okay, um, let's see. Is the only purpose to this to determine SWR without having to put the antenna up and down so many times? Well, you're going to have to put it up and down. Every time you make an adjustment, you've got to take it down, and then you've got to put it back up, and you measure it in place. Okay, uh, some of the other benefits, they will do a lot of other little things. Um, measuring the length of coax electrically, uh, time domain reflectometer to look for where there's a break in the coax and so on. Um, do you consider an analyzer like the MFJ to be superior? I really like this for ease of use. The little vector network analyzers, the nano VNAs, certainly do work. And now it is not obvious from the manual what you have to do. And if you look at somebody's explanation of one, it seems like whenever they change the firmware, they change the menu. And so therefore, you have to go a different route to get to what you need. I wouldn't recommend it, but some people swear by them. Okay. Um, this is in the vicinity of 300. This is in the vicinity of 100. Um, this might be a nice one because it's really designed. 
and it goes all the way up to 600 megahertz. It claims to go up to 600 megahertz. Um, this one right here, I think, is uh, up to about 200 megahertz. Uh, this one goes up to 2 meters. It goes up to like 170 megahertz. The problem when you get above that is circuits start behaving weird. Okay, there you go. That gives you a little bit of background of antenna analyzers. Um, if you've gone this far in the video, I invite you to subscribe. Um, it uh, shows that uh, you're interested in these videos, and by subscribing, you're telling YouTube that uh, they ought to share these videos with other people. If you would like to help support this channel financially so that I can do things like buy these so I can explain them to you, please uh, go to decastlercom slash support and pick something that uh, works for you. And until we next meet, 73.